with us in the studio is Arthur Tolua Jai. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Now, we're actually not bereft of um, youth empowerment programs. We do have youth empowerment programs. So why do we have challenges implementing them? What I would say is it could be issues around lack of consistency around the education system here in um, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I find that empowerment generally begins from within, right? So if you're confident from within, that generally allows you to be more empowered and if we have a series of youth who go through a number of different kind of you know experiences during their formative years mm. although the programs that we do put in place are there to help empower the youth I feel as if they are solutions to the symptoms there are no real there is no real effort to mm. mitigate the actual um, creation of those problems. All right, in the first place, um, what do you think is the place of empowerment in youth development? Should the youths uh, wait uh, for the governments to empower them or can the youths begin to do certain things for themselves? It's a two-way street, so people can definitely do things on their own, but there needs to be space for people to be able to make those decisions and, and go forth and, and do the things that empower them. For example, if as a young person you want to start up your own business, is there the structure, is there the encouragement, is there the education to be able to do that? For example, in the education system, do we have um, curriculums and areas where we are helping people to develop entrepreneurial skills? Those things in itself help empower people and then it's then down to the youth to then take those opportunities and empower themselves. Well, um, being a youth is a constant search for purpose. So as um, members of a community, do you think we place enough values on our youth? I would say that we do. But at the same time, we are living in a, a constantly changing environment, a changing world with the increase of technology. And I feel as if placing um, value on the youth is something that is, is, is not, a hom it's not a homogenous thing. It's not something that we can do as just as a one size fits all for all mm -hmm. youth. It depends on, as I mentioned earlier, people's background, people's mm -hmm. kind of training as, as they're growing up. And I feel as if the education system, families, Everyone has a, a part to play as well as the government. And among the many agitations and demands um, uh, from the youths, uh, where would you say uh, the government should focus more attention on presently? I would say more, more attention should be focused on how do we allow the youth to, as you mentioned about purpose, mm bring forth, like discover what their purpose is and bring that to the table. So people feel empowered when they're doing things that they love, when people are in a, in a state of flow where they're doing the things that they enjoy. So if the government can look for ways in which pe to help people kind of discover what their purpose is, discover what it is that they love, discover what their strengths are, and then empower people is to Is that in any way so. synced with educational institutions or a different institution? Now? I would say education institution plays a, a heavy part in it. People can partner with education systems to be able to do so. So for example, you know, strength finding, you know, courses that people can do, you know, wh what am I good at? Am I a caring person? Am I someone who is very social? If I am, then what can I do to harness that? And then people find that they're in careers that actually that and they're being able to use their strengths and it's not something that is you know tedious for right. them it's actually something that they enjoy and therefore the, the empowerment you know becomes uh, all right strong. um youth empowerment is beginning to be a cliche you know and um do you think we have explored extensively you know all the different ways that we can actually empower our youth I would say no, we haven't. As I mentioned before, technology, with the increase of technology, social media, things are always changing. And mm -hmm. the efforts that we've made thus far, you know, have been good. But I think that more is still to be done to be able to address the needs of people as individuals. Mm -hmm. I think that is something that is very key. People are individuals. And although as youth, we are all youth and, you know, within the same age bracket, people have different needs and, and those are the, what needs to be met for people to feel empowered. Right. Mm -hmm. Social media platforms um, 
uh, have become practically everything right now from yeah. Instagram <laughs> to Twitter to Facebook. Practically everything happens Every there. You know, how can media. the government write? <laughs> and, and the youth, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be amazed. I'm sure you won't be anyway. The amount of hours, um, the amount of time you'd spend on social media, myself yeah. inclusive, <laughs> of course. You know, well, how can the government begin to harness this pla these platforms, you know, to empower the youths? I would say first perfect example is around election time. How do we get people involved in terms of, you know, manifestos being shared in bite-sized, easy chunkable ways on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. These are ways in which people feel, and you know, um, you mentioned earlier about placing value on the youth. If we bring the message to them on their platforms, then they feel as if, okay, people actually want me to hear this message. Whereas if it's broadcasted to everybody, but not tailored to the youth, it seems as if it's okay, well, if I hear it, I hear it. If I don't, I don't. So definitely harnessing, you know, milestone events such as, you know, elections or any other things that happen, you know, nationally or regionally, putting that on social media and then that shows people that actually this message is for you well, guys. Well, with that, isn't that back to status quo where we're talking about the governments telling the youths what they want the youths to hear? Yes, but then at the same time, you're, you're bringing the information to them and then they have the opportunity to make a decision based on what it is that they've heard. Oh, well... Um the youth, hopefully, they, they will get their acts together. Right. <laughs> government can do right by them. Tolu Ajayi, Arthur, thank you so much for being here. Thank no you. Problem. Thank you.